I actually have a very difficult job. You know, it's, it's between me and the drinks. So let's see how we can do it really fast. Uh, quick question. How many of us here understand things like RAID 1, 0, RAID 5? Thank you so much. So yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm talking to the right, right audience, everything about storage. Uh, looks familiar. Does it, does it, does it cause something? When, when, does it remind you of something, something interesting? What we're talking about here is, is very simple. I don't know. How many of, of you had your budgets increased by 10% or more this year compared to the last year? So there are a few lucky people who don't actually see this. And for the rest, uh, we fully appreciate you have to do about 25% more work, probably handle 35% more data, and you still got to do it with either the same budgets or in some really serious situations, <laughs> probably shorter and lesser budgets. Thank you for joining, sir. So I really like this picture because this is what data is. You know, I, I, I've been in data centers. When you're setting up a new data, you have no idea what's going to hit you. It's a lot like the water coming out of this hose. You thought you were going to get this. This is what you usually get. Data is one, one real big challenge. And I think uh, a lot of uh, folks have actually talked about that earlier. But these are the points that I think are important to us. This is what we want to talk to you about. I've actually put the word forklift upgrades in red. So we've, we've been talking to CIOs all over the country, actually all over the world. Uh, we talked to some, some folks earlier today. It did come out as a big pain, forklift upgrades. What's a forklift upgrade? You buy a piece of equipment in the year 2008, you put a big complex project on it, which is, which is live in the year 2009. You probably run it for two, three years, and the equipment is already four and a half years old. And the vendor is telling you, you have six months to go before I turn off your support. Okay. I, I think that, that probably is a great way of summarizing what's the problem associated with forklifts. I think, do we have any agreement? Does somebody feel the pain? Excellent. Awesome. So that's the first one. And second, of course, is how many of you buy a new storage and then don't buy any software for the new storage? Nobody does that, right? So you bought a storage, you bought... We, okay, let me ask another quick question. How many people understand the word snapshots? Super, awesome. So you buy a storage today, okay? You go, got it running, it's five years old. And when you buy a new storage, obviously you got to pay money for all the software once again. How come that doesn't happen with an Oracle database, that doesn't hap happen with an SQL? You still use the old licenses if you buy new hardware, but it seems uh, the storage companies get away by by selling you the same software a second time. But that's, that I, we believe that that's a key pain uh, that the industry is going through, our customers are going through. So this is what Dell has been doing. We have been working to build a fairly comprehensive portfolio. Don't think of these as random acquisitions that Dell has done. We're very clear what the big picture needs to look like. We're very sure the, the, the complete solution we want to offer to you we want to be your partners in this business, and, and, and the solution we want to offer to you should be complete in every aspect. Do we have a perfect picture, nicely painted up? No. But we believe we, we, have, we have a brand new strategy which doesn't have any, any legacy baggage of the past. So let's talk about uh, legacy baggage of the past. How many folks here have ever been involved in a major forklift upgrade of storage, which was five years old, so you had to replace the the thing with the old one. Okay, I would assume some of you are shy to raise your hands. And, and the reason for that is, that I was actually working with one of the largest tobacco, the largest tobacco company in, in the country about eight, nine years back. We migrated their data from their old storage to a brand new one. A uh, very interesting situation because uh, most of the work was done on the weekends, and I'm fairly certain that none of the executives went more than an hour away from their office on any of those weekends. God forbid if something goes wrong on a Saturday night and the production doesn't start working on a Monday, uh, we know somebody is in real serious trouble. So forklifts are a pain, and, and, and that's something we all appreciate. We understand, right? So that's why what we've been doing is we've been building a portfolio of solutions which addresses a perfect example is forklifts. Another example is how many of us understand the word storage tiering? Okay, great. 
For the others, let me just, just spend a minute and talk about what tiering is. Tiering is a very beautiful, ideal scenario. In the tiering world, what will happen is, okay, so let's step back and let's, let's talk about what, what the previous presenters mentioned. If you have 10 terabytes of data, most of it is inactive. Okay, for those in, who want to probably look at it from a more simplistic perspective, we all have laptops. So you probably have a 200 gig hard drive on your laptop. You probably have 50 gigs of data on your laptop. You have 50 gigs of data on your laptop. Probably the only data you ever accessed was the photographs you took last week of your kid, right? I don't think you even go back and look at five-year-old photographs every day. <laughs> you, definitely, you definitely do not open up the mails which are lying in your laptop for the last five years. Okay, I, I, my, my life is literally made up of last four days worth, max two weeks worth of mails, right? So we all have a huge amount of so-called static information. What's the problem with this information? It is sitting where you put it in the first place. And the first place where you put this information is usually the most expensive, the fastest, and the most premium one. And the problem is once it comes there, that's where it lives. Any reasons why that is the case? Okay, that's a technical answer, but why, why do you think, why do you think, if you know the reason is no tearing, why, why don't you tear it? Okay, <laughs> appreciate that. But you can watch the movie on the plane if you had a slightly slower disc. No, you don't have two discs on. Exactly. So, point. Absolutely. It's a tearing problem. You can't have a fast and a slow disc. What's an example of a fast disc? So let me put this situation in a little bit more perspective. You could have had a situation where you had a small SSD drive, maybe just two gigs, because that's what you really use. So all your important information sits on a two gig drive. And why is a two gig drive a good idea? Because a 200 gig drive costs you like 40,000 rupees. A two gig drive would probably cost you 4,000 rupees. So if you had a 4,000 rupee drive where all your real data was sitting, you would be very, very happy because you will get the speed of a solid state drive, the price of a, of a SATA drive. Okay, it's the best of both worlds. But to do that, you need some magical software that ensures that only what you need is what is sitting on that two gig drive, right? This is a perfect exam example of, a, of real world storage tearing. Are we able to do it? We can't, right? But what we've been doing is we've been working at the back end of the data center because an individual laptop is an individual laptop, but data center is where, where hundreds and thousands of people's information is sitting. Let's go fix the, fix the problem at the core, at the heart. So this is what we've done. We've built out a fairly comprehensive portfolio of solutions. The capabilities that I'm gonna to talk to you about are available on the primary storage, they are available on backup storage, they are available on archive from us. All of these solutions are horizontally scalable. So you can start with as little as uh, maybe a couple of terabytes. Uh, you can grow into a few hundred terabytes and some of them can, can very easily exceed a petabyte on the primary storage side and, and a lot of petabytes on the, on the archival side. So we, 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 we believe we've built out the right kind of portfolio. We have references, we have customers who are running it. So this is, this is the solution portfolio that, that, that I'm going to talk to you about. But today, the objective is to just focus on two small pieces. That doesn't mean that that is all we have. So, so just remember, what I'm going to talk about are a few features. Um, and if you think it makes business sense, we at Dell are more than happy to come and spend time with you. So let's look at the first one. The solution is called Dell Ecologic. This is what, this is a product, this is a technology, this is a company we bought four years ago. Believe me, all storage systems look the same. I wish I had a nice, beautiful, shiny, red color mobile phone to show, which is, which is, which is what sells the, the easiest. But our job is to end of the day handle hard drives, right? So it looks like any other storage systems, but that's where the, tech, where, where the real life uh, comparisons end. Everything we have at Dell has a very strong differentiator which directly connects with your problems. So let's look at the first key differentiator. This is how you would buy a, buy a storage solution, right? You would buy, you have servers, which could be physical or virtual. You would have a fabric, which could be ice, because fiber channel, doesn't really matter. And then you would have some place where you actually store your data, right? That's how, that's how you build it out. What happens if you have a virtual server which is four or five years old and you need to replace it? How hard is it to replace a server with VMware on it, machines running inside VMware? 
how hard it is. I don't think, I don't think hard is the right word to even use. You buy a new server, you, you put the virtualization layer, and you sit there like this, and the machines just fail over, then you unplug the old one and throw it away, right? But when you have to do the same on storage, it's such a painful job. The reason is, everybody has a storage for virtual servers. Okay, so every single vendor in the market, everybody else, will offer you a storage for virtual servers. A great storage, a perfect storage for virtual servers. What we offer you is a virtual storage for virtual servers. And, and give me just two minutes to explain to you why we believe this is the way of doing virtualization. So carefully look at this animation. You bought the first storage system. This storage system is holding your data. You have a couple of servers. And if you see those yellow boxes, that is how the data of different servers is spread across this, this first virtual storage you bought. It has its controllers. Okay, it, it's like any other storage. But then, and let's say this is the system you bought in the year 2008. So come year 2010, you need, you need more storage, like, so you buy another unit. But remember, difference number one. When I give you an upgrade, I give you additional controllers, I give you additional I.O., additional memory, additional CPU horsepower, and then the magic happens. And what exactly is the magic? The data actually spreads across both the storage systems automatically. So normally what happens is, when you buy an expansion shelf of hard drives, let's say you had 50 hard drives in the year 2008. When you go to the year 2010, you buy another 50 hard disks. You plug it in. Nothing really happens. Someone has to go create volumes, LUNs, mount them before they can be used. It's a manual process. In our case, when you buy the second unit, you know, it takes probably half an hour to physically fit it into the rack, but once that is done, the actual configuration is, 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 is a 30-minute exercise. Once that is done, so let's, let's, let's do some more uh, granularity. So on a Monday evening, the storage arrives. On a Tuesday morning, you physically fit it into the rack. Nothing has been shut down. You connect it to your network switch. Nothing has been shut down. You spend 30 minutes to configure it. Nothing has been shut down. And then you go and do whatever you do every other day. So Tuesday morning, you've done this. Wednesday morning, when you come, the data which was sitting on 50 hard drives has, is now sitting on 100 hard drives. Your existing servers will see instant performance improvement because the data is sitting on more drives. Benefit number one. Benefit number two, you see more capacity. On these storage systems, you do not say two drives belong to him and three drives belong to him. You see, there are, there are 40, 40 terabytes. You had 20 earlier. Now you have 40 terabytes just allocated. Where they sit is up to us to manage on the storage systems. That's what happens in the year 2010. Come year 2012, you need more capacity. You buy another unit. It's a true scale-out architecture. Today, you do not have to decide how much memory should be there? Remember the word, I'm not using the word cache. It's a misused word in the industry. If a storage has 16 GB memory, I repeat, it has 16 GB memory. It does not have 16 GB cache. Okay, there is a little bit of cache in that, but that depends upon what is available. It, it is not cache. So again, back, back to the original point. So you buy another unit, you get another pair set of controllers, and that is how the scale-out system works. There is no downtime involved. Every time you add, it grows with you. But then the real fun begins. This is year 2012. The first storage is probably almost five years old. What would you have to do if you had any other traditional storage? It's time to take it out, throw it away, buy a brand new one. That is the easy part of the job. And then spend a few weeks or a few months or whatever it takes to physically migrate the data and keep praying that nothing goes down. Okay? So you will not get an ROI from me till you are five years old. And then guess what happens if, if this was your solution? You buy another unit. So again, Tuesday morning, the unit is deployed. Wednesday morning, the data is spread. You do one thing differently. Which is the actual physical unit which is five years old? Just the first one, right? So you go to the first unit on your, on, on your user cons console, right-click it, and, and, and click on a button called delete. It doesn't get deleted. A process called array evacuation starts. The first storage 
starts flushing its data on the rest of the three systems. So this starts on a Wednesday morning. If you have a lot of load, maybe it'll take two, two days. If it's average load, it'll take 24 hours. So Thursday, Friday morning when you come, the first storage data is, has been completely wiped out. It's sitting on the balance three systems. You just go there, plug out all the wires, remove it. Key point, in this entire exercise, you actually spent only 30 minutes on the first day, five minutes on the second day, and then you physically removed it. You do not turn off any server. You do not turn off any application. You do not shut down anything. That's the value. We call it scale out storage. It's auto load balancing followed by array evacuation. We believe this is the technology of the future. We believe this is what customers will do two years from now, five years from now. This is the way to go into the future. It has no problems, no legacy baggage of the past. It does nothing like the way you used to do in the past. You don't have to pick up six hard drives, format them, define a RAID level, make a volume, mount it, and then when you run out of capacity, then you start doing some other magic of a lot of manual work. None of that is involved. That's what makes this, this, this capability special. And here is what, this is the ultimate proof point. A customer who bought 5,400 RPM hard drives, that is what was available in 2003. Our laptops have faster drives nowadays. He bought that array, PS100, in the year 2003. He buys 7,200 RPM, he buys 15,000 RPM, SAS, he buys solid state drives, he buys hybrid systems with half solid state and half, half 15,000 RPM drives. You buy this latest gadget that we're shipping today, you have that old one, they still work together. It's, the, it's listed on my website, it doesn't work, come catch our neck. It works. You want proof points, I have customers here who've used it, who can vouch for it. I run. If you think email is important, we are a one lakh over a, over a lakh employee company. We literally live on our emails. We run it on this. That's the strength of this technology. Never goes down. So a lot of people talk about five nines of uptime, which we have, by the way, across our products. That's not the catch. What I'm saving you is a whole lot of effort, which you would have gone through otherwise. So the key here is, this is a real, this is not a marketing claim. This is a real virtual storage for real virtual servers. We believe this is the right solution for bulk of your production data. A great solution. And this is what Adrian mentioned when he said, we have a, we have a customer who's running his SAP on it. We have customers running their production databases running on it. Really large setups. And by the way, it has a few other capabilities, which I will mention in, in about 30 seconds each. Capability number one. Quick question. We, how many people use a lot of snapshots? 100 plus. Okay. So very few people do it. And you, do you know the reason why? Because when you take a snapshot, a traditional storage slows down. So if you take 500 snapshots, oh, that's dangerous. And if you decide to take more than that, we're talking very serious problems. On this storage, and I can explain to you why, but this storage does not slow down with snapshots. It has a second benefit, which is more important. When you take a snapshot, your mail is on the way to the server, from the server to the storage, you take a snapshot, it's not a reliable snapshot, right? Because one, data, one piece of data is half. And if you have 10 people writing and reading from the storage, we have a big issue. Because when you take a snapshot, you can't rely on that. This is an application-aware snapshot, uh, application-aware storage. We give you a piece of software, really hard to install. You know how hard? You put it into the server with SQL and with Exchange, set up, I agree, continue, finish, done, take it out. Once you've done that, you take a snapshot, it'll, it'll quiz the, the Exchange server, it'll let the record uh, be completed on the SQL server, it'll let the VMware uh, completely flush out the IOs which are happening before it takes a snapshot. Guaranteed, consistent, you don't have to spend sleepless nights. You can take one every three hours. We believe this is, again, the other key value we bring to the table. You would have to buy a few thousand dollars worth of software licenses just to do it using backup software. And remember, backup software has the pain that you still need to copy it, right? So someone has to work from 7 o'clock in the night to 12 o'clock in the night to finish your backups. Snapshot is like, it's done. You click the button, and five minutes later, everything is nice, hunky-dory, working, and you rely on it. That's what the storage does for you.
Do you think this is the way of the future? We believe we invested one and a half billion dollars because this is the way of the future. We run, I, I run my own business on it. We have, we have a few thousand customers. If I'm not wrong, we are over 12,000 customers by now who are running their business on this. So now let me spend quickly five more minutes to tell you about what is the second important. So, so like I promised you, what we do is different. It is not like any other storage in the market. This is the other one. This has this dream capability that we talked about, storage tiering. You know how hard it is to implement storage tiering on it? It is so hard that when you turn it on, you have to spend time in case you want to turn it off. It is on it by default. It has the best possible algorithms, and I'll tell you why. Any data that comes in, what, is, what do people think a tier is? You have solid state drives, that is a tier. You have 15,000 RPM drives, that is a tier. You have 7,200 RPM drives, that is a tier, right? That's what a tier is. I will tell you what is the ultimate in tiering. The ultimate in tiering is, on the solid state drives, I will make two volumes. One in RAID 1.0, which is the fastest for writes, and the other in RAID 5, which is, fa which, which is as good as RAID 1.0 on reads, but has least wastage. So again, I, I repeat, by default, any data you write to it goes to the solid state drives and gets written in RAID 1.0. Do you think it can get any faster than that? No, that, that is the fastest way of writing data on any storage. So you run it, you write the data, it goes to RAID 1.0. You define your lean period. You're a BPO house, one, 11 o'clock in the after to 1 o'clock in the afternoon, less load, tell the storage. That's the only thing you get to configure, by the way. Uh, you're a normal business, 3 a.m. in the morning to 5 a.m. in the morning, you have, you have low load. Tell the storage. That's the only thing you tell the storage. After that, do you know what the storage is going to do? During that time, everything which was written in RAID 1.0 is converted to RAID 5. Right? So here's the thing. It goes to the top tier, and it does RAID 1.0 and RAID 5. And then over a period of time, it comes down to the middle tier. You still don't use the data. It is now months old. It goes to the, the 2 terabyte or in future 3 terabyte and 4 terabyte drives. That's what it does for you. And by the way, it does, does it for you without you wanting to do anything. You just sit there. You just make a volume, you allocate it, you do not care what happens to it. This is really great because if you think, think of a PST file. A PST file is a very great example. It has thousands of emails. But this technology does not go into the PST file. The PST file is made up of blocks. All you're changing are these blocks. So imagine your PST file is technically spread across a series of hard drives. Most of it is sitting on the, on the, on the low, slowest tier. And this is called data progression technology. It can take things down. And let's say you have five years data and there is an audit happening, income tax audit happening. You start pounding the information. The storage will migrate it back up based on the performance needed. So it goes down. And if things go wrong, it comes back up. This is the ultimate algorithm for implementing storage tiering. And we don't call it storage tiering. We call it data progression because we actually progress data. We even go, go to further heights. How many people know that on a hard drive, the external tracks are longer, therefore they are faster? Do you know when you have a hard drive, the outermost circles are longer, right? So you store more data on them. And because you have the same spinning speed, you can actually read the data faster. The outer tracks can be up to 20, 25% faster. We can even do tiering on, the, on this. We call it fast tier. Guess what? You had, you, let's say you did not buy solid state drives. You need to squeak some more information, performance out of your storage. You can, you can use these tracks. We will tier it in such a way that the most critical information sits on the outermost tracks of the fastest hard drives. How good is that? How cool is that? This is what makes all our storage solutions the best of breed. We spent a billion dollars acquiring this, this technology, and there's a reason why we paid that kind of money. We believe this is the future. So just to give you an idea, uh, let me put some numbers to what Adrian Johnson mentioned earlier. If you have 100 terabytes of data, and 80% of that is sitting on these drives, so I'll give you an idea. A performance drive is 600 GB, right? That's what a high-performance drive is. 
A SATA drive is, is, is we, sh we actually have a shipping three terabyte drive. So 600 GB to three terabyte drive is five times the difference in capacity. Power consumption is roughly the same, price is roughly the same. And if 80% of your information is sitting there, how much money do you think you're gonna save your organizations? A lot. Less space, because that's where most of the information is, less power. Because, because the, the, the information is sitting on a, few, on, on, a, on a very few hard drives. That is exactly what we're delivering to you. Any questions on this technology so far? It's dual ported, so it is highly redundant. By the way, this is a multi-protocol storage. You can do fiber channel, everybody does it, right? You can do iSCSI, everybody does it. How about, you can do fiber channel over ethernet. Very few people do it. Even better. This is based on a standard systems architecture. It has PCI slots. So you buy it now. Six months later, when a 16 gigabit fiber channel comes out, please feel free to use it. It's a true multi-protocol storage. Each and every data block is tracked for placing it in some place, uh, proper place and all that. Yes. Uh, so how much is the um, overhead of uh, keeping all this information for all the blocks which are being stored and moved? It's what is the overhead, uh, data overhead over the uh, real data? It's about 0.1%. It's eight bytes for a two MB block. Do your maths. Only 2 MB block move, moves. No, we can do half an MB block, 2 MB block, 4 MB block. You decide. We'll give you granularity. Even better, on the same hard drive, you can choose the block. Part of the hard drive is half an MB. Part of the hard drive is 2 MB. Part of the hard drive is 4 MB. You choose. On this storage, there are no rules. As flexible as you want it. Thank you for the question. This is the second thing I was telling you about, snapshots. This, this guy, you can take as many snapshots as you want. A brochure says unlimited. I have heard figures between 5,500 to 10,000. I can assure you a few hundred snapshots, he will handle it over lunch. Use it. How hard is it to take snapshots? I can assure you, it is not hard. I, I have spoken to a lot of people who say they paid for snapshots, they never used it, because using a snapshot was painful. I can assure you, you're going to enjoy doing it because it takes a click to do it or even better, sit down, write a policy or use a GUI to write a policy and you're done. It's, it's as simple as that. But it's even better. It's one product. So when you, when, you go, when you talk to my competitors, 120, 240, 200, 400, 500, 1,000 drives, you know, how do you decide which is the one you want if you want to buy 50 hard drives today? Should you be buying the one with 240 hard drives? Should you be buying the one with 310 hard, di hard drives? Should you be buying the one with 500 hard drives? Should you be buying the one with 900 hard drives? You want to buy 50 today, which is the frame you should pick up? There is no sane way of making a decision. So I'll, I'll make it for you. It's one model. You know, it's like what Henry, Henry Ford used to say. I don't mind what color, the, color of the car you like as long as it is black, but that's the only one I'm going to give you. So there's one model, that's all you get it. This, and this, this model, you can actually scale out the controllers. So you can do what? You can do a pair of controllers, you can buy another pair of controllers, and you can do live volume between them. We, we can do some really cool stuff. So this can really scale out, not only from disk's perspective, but also from controller's perspective. If you replicate, believe me, this is the ultimate thing. How many people here have implemented disaster recovery and replication? Great. Superb. So let's say we become good friends, and I, you and me agree that we'll have a few drinks. Then we will drive back to your data center, and you promise to turn off your production storage to demonstrate the disaster. Anybody volunteering? We can go to your data center, production, and you will switch it off. Anytime. Yeah. And we have a 100% replication there. And, and nothing will go down? Nothing will go down. Okay. Awesome, love it. Anybody else who's going to... I'm actually going to drive all night with you. After a drink, maybe you might decide to turn it off. <laughs> Superb. 
by the way, I'm going to give you a small tip. If you implement it with, with the storage solution I'm talking about, everybody would agree to do it. And I will give you the reason for that. Because my storage comes with a simulator. When you, when you, when you click on the simulator, he will actually start testing your links. He will start testing by sending the blocks. He will, he will, he will go to both the storage systems. And then he will tell you everything is fine or, or there is a problem. There, there is a beautiful simulator built into it. How's that? And you had it, I'm sure you would happily agree to take me because you don't really have to power it off. You just have to click on a button. So there are a lot of small things. Uh, last quick slide. You know what this is? This is a very complex piece of software, fancy stuff. But I'm not going to waste time on that because it takes about five minutes to install. It generates reports that anyone can read. But I will tell you who's the most important person who can read. I'll give you the name of the report. This report is called a hero report. And I will tell you why it is called a hero report. Because you take out this report, let's say your MD comes in or your CFO comes in and says, hey, you spent like a crore rupees the other six months ago. What happened? You know, you talked some fancy language. You've come to me with an, with an upgrade request for 10 more hard drives. With, I don't think any, any other storage will give you the justification that the hero report does. The hero report will help you take out a beautiful printout, put it in front of the CFO and tell him, this percentage of the data is sitting on two and three terabyte drives. Therefore, I've saved the company so many hard disks. Each hard disk is about 15 watts. So, so much power. Each commercial price of the power in Delhi is 15 rupees. So many rupees per month into five years. Let's talk how much more money you're going to give me for, for moving the rest of the data onto the storage. This report will do it for you. Comes with the storage. I promise you if you find it hard, I will send a dedicated guy to sit there and explain this to you. So, quick summary, a solution is made up of four quick parts. A great piece of real solution, which has to be provided to you with the right services, the right software capabilities, and optimized by the vendor so it works for you. That's what we will give you. We will not sell you a storage. We're not here to sell you a storage. We are here who will give you the application, database licenses. We will give you give you the servers to run it on, we will give you the hypervisor to make it work on, we will give you the fabric interconnect, we will give you the storage, we will make it all work. You just come and, and, and catch one neck. That, that's, that's the accountability, that's the credibility we want to put on the table. Thank you so much. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, I just wanted to make one quick point. So we're setting up a Google Hangout. Uh, if you're not familiar with a Google Hangout, uh, basically, we would like to invite four, five, or six like-minded CIOs to a video chat. We will schedule it into your calendars at a time convenient to you. We will have the right Dell experts based on what you, you would suggest is your desirable state of affairs. And then we can have a discussion on these technologies. So anybody is interested, I believe the forms are lying on your table. There's a perforated paper. Just fill up the downside and, and leave it on the reception on your way out. And, uh, and that way we can set up the Hangouts. They're not going to happen tomorrow. They'll probably happen over a period of next few months. I think I'm the only one left between the drinks, so thank you so much. <laughs>